Well, hey team, Grant Hagen here with Drone Poi, joined with Jay and James. Welcome into 24, gang. Uh, Happy New Year. Guys, we're excited to kick off the year. Uh, New Year's resolutions are slowly dipping away, uh, but I hope not for you. Uh, welcome back. We have some exciting things uh, slated in here for the year. Uh, and just to have an excited time uh, to have Jay and James join us back. You guys have been here before. This is not a new hat for y'all, but uh, thanks for joining in. Good to see you guys. Lovely to see you, Grant, and nice to share some uh, some of the updates with the rest of the community. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Uh, I, I love the new year. I don't know about you guys personally. Uh, I don't know how we stole Jay on his birthday, so uh, I expect to see a lot of happy birthdays in the chat there. Uh, thanks for... Folks that are tuning in, tell us where you're tuning in from. Uh, Jay, happy birthday to you, man. Any any fun plans for uh, the, the birthday week? Thanks, Grant. Uh, no, nothing planned right now, um, but I'm excited for all the new drone play goodies that are landing today and tomorrow. <laughs> nice. Uh, I see what you did there. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a really good time. We got a lot of fun stuff uh, slated for today. I appreciate uh, the folks that are tuning in with us here. You know, we've been doing these, uh, gosh, for almost... I don't know, guys, how many of these have we done now? I feel like this is our fourth or fifth one that we've done. We do this every quarter. We try to really give uh, you guys, the audience, just an opportunity to, one, meet more folks uh, within our team, uh, which Jay and James have been on here before, but two, just to really get an insight into like what our product team is doing, what uh, what it is that you guys can get excited about, really not just uh, in the future, but also today when you guys leave this uh, live stream. And then and then third, really just to uh, have some fun. These are all exciting things. I think 24 is just setting up to be a really fun and exciting year. Uh, and so I, I don't want to get in the way between us and what we have to talk about. So uh, I'm going to kick it over to you, James, uh, to really talk about, uh, you know, we, we last year when we did this, you know, we kind of talked about our a really kind of charter, right? Or this kind of vision pillar that we had of these three main things that we really saw and identified as like, hey, this is the uh, job site uh, uh, plant of the future. This is really what we are working towards. And I kind of want to have you talk over this a little bit because not only is this our vision, it is like reality. It's happening. It's it's real. These things are uh, out there and ready to be done today. But I, I want to kick it over to you, James. Like, Tell us a little bit about uh, this kind of how these vision pillars have really played out and, and what we can start to see uh, on job sites here coming soon. Yeah, I think the first thing just to quickly touch on is this time last year, we we just uh, merged or acquired Structure the Site. And uh, having multiple reality capture systems is the biggest headache right now for, you know, one of the biggest headaches for field teams who are trying to adopt this kind of technology. And so our number one goal for last year was, was merging everything together. And we are some distance down that road but ultimately it's a, it's a massive, it's a massive job to bring, not just the air and ground together, but also things like fixed cameras, LIDAR, there, there is so much reality capture data to bring together. And a big part of our vision is that unified piece. Um, if you just move forward one slide, you know, the, the biggest blocker and expense to scaling reality capture is uh, is the actual capturing of the data, right? You, you've got humans taking time out of their day-to-day -day work to go and capture this data with cameras, uh, with drones. And, you know, our view is that should be completely automated in the future and not just automated, but scheduled and scheduled very often. The most, you know, the recency and the frequency of data is very, very strongly cor correlated with the value of that data. And we're seeing now customers in the US, in Australia, in Europe, all starting to actually adopt full, uh, full, fully automated reality capture workflows. Uh, and that's very, very exciting. And then the third piece that, again, we're seeing more and more of, where there, there, is, there are different approaches to this problem. We have a very specific approach, um, is the intelligence piece. And okay, you're capturing this data, but how do you understand, uh, how do you understand that data? How do you develop measurements, how do you um, generate insights from that data? And our view again is that should be automatic. You know, minutes or hours after you capture the data, you should be delivered new important insights that allow you to run your business better, allow that job site to be more efficient, to make uh, everyone on that job site to make better decisions and to be all, you know, everyone on the same page. Yeah, I think what uh, 
just to summarize that, because we talked about this last year, and it's really important that this this is a long term thing. Like this is really important to uh, I think you said it really well. Like get the most value out of reality capture. Like it's not something that uh, you know it just happens overnight. Like it is something that is going to take time, and you have to chip away at it. Uh, but what's also exciting though is that it's happening. Like you can see it in real time. You can see these things playing out. And yeah, a big step of what we did last year, what you touched on, James, is, hey, unifying. Like, hey, we acquired this company that has an amazing presence on ground capture and how important that is to be combined with aerial capture and the kind of first segment up there of just being unified. And at 24, I'm thinking, man, it is such a huge year for automation. You touched on that uh, quite a bit too. And uh, and we'll get to some of these examples specifically. But yeah, I think that's just, just exciting, James, is like when you're talking about what this is gonna look like in the future, uh, th this is a really exciting time to be in this space. And we get really excited about hearing a ton from all of you as our customers and, and thought leaders in this space to say, hey, like to, to get the most value out of these things, you really have to have all three of them. And I think that's what's really important uh, that you obviously touched on there too, James. So we've come a long way. Uh, and I just want to kind of touch on a little bit. Uh, Jay, I know you're going to kind of hit on a little bit of, all right, so uh, we have come a long way. There's been a lot of things that have kind of progressed over uh, really last year in particular. We had an amazing uh, event last October in our uh, Drone Deploy conference where we announced a lot of this stuff. But I, like, show us specifically, like, because I, I don't want to take for granted that that folks uh, have been in here and see this maybe as much as we do in developing it. But give us some really like hands on in this specific case with what does it look like for ground and air data to be in the same platform? Yeah, thanks, Grant. Um, more than happy to jump into the product and, and give an example of what that looks like. But um, you know, I, I've been with Drone Deploy now for a little over uh, five years, and it's uh, interesting to see not only how far we've come as a company, but really the demands of our customers and what they're really looking for in a reality capture program. Um, and so, ground and unif and uh, uh, having ground and aerial in a single platform is something that we've heard a lot of our customers talk about over the past few years. Um, and something that we've been able to execute on since destruction site acquisition. So for example, this is actually a project some of you may have seen before. Um, it's a high school project that Core Construction completed, um, I want to say uh, probably about two years ago now, just uh, north of Dallas, Texas. And what's really compelling about this project is that they've been using drone deploy throughout all the different stages of construction from uh, pre-construction all the way through closeout and another interesting fact about this project was that they had used drone deploy for documenting their uh, aerial exterior phases from beginning to end. And they were using Struction Site to document all their interior work and MEP installation and validating their subs um, on the interior aspect of the facility. And so one of the things we did was brought that data together into a single unified project to show you what that looks like when we bring the best of Struction Site in with the best of drone deploy. Uh, a big piece of this was a completely diff, uh, completely new brand um, and UI refresh that allows you to navigate a lot of this data much more simply. So for example, just on the aerial exterior view, you can uh, easily go back in time and see what the site had looked like um, a year ago, two years ago, all the way back through uh, earthworks and excavation, all the way back to the original pre-con survey, even though, giving a really easy view to see what that looks like across time. Uh, we also have the ability for you to capture ground data in a single view within Drone Deploy. For example, you can go out and use the new Drone Deploy ground application and capture ground-based walks that you can use to supplement your exterior data. So for closeout purposes in this scenario, you can see what the exterior finishes of the building might look like, but you've got the high accuracy context of where you're physically located in the real world with the latest map that you've captured on that particular site. So really combining the benefits that you get from having the most up-to-date aerial map in conjunction with your most up-to-date uh, interior data. And of course, giving you the ability to navigate between those two instances. We know some of our customers only exist within the interior realm or just within the exterior realm. And so we've made it really easy to navigate between those two areas, whether you're mostly navigating on the exterior view or the interior view. So like I mentioned before, this is a project that uh, core construction was using instruction site. Much of the data we have now merged and migrated into the unified drone deploy product, where we can see some of the walks that they have captured on their level one, some of the individual panels that they've captured on this level and some of their other levels. 
Um, and more importantly, we can go in and take a look and travel back in time to see what this project looked like on any given date. For example, if I look at, I, and I believe this is the orchestra room here, I can come in here and take a look at what this site, uh, what the specific room looked like on April 21st of 2022, compare that to what this site might have looked like a few months uh, to a year prior, um, all the way back to even before the, the roof had gone up within the building. So this is just a really quick overview of some of the things that we've done to merge um, exterior and interior data uh, in our new unified platform. Yeah, yeah. it's a and lot. <laughs> just, it's, it's a lot. And, and the reality there is people don't want to move between systems, right? You, you don't want to guess where that photo you need is. You, you want to be able to go to one place, choose the level that you need, select the time range that you want. And these are all of the images that, that match that those bounds. Um, you know, we made a lot of improvements, even just to the drone deploy interface in the last year, uh, based on the feedback we heard, we spoke to hundreds of customers in the last year around just finding data. How do we make it very easy for you to find data? And that's why we moved to this more date range oriented approach, because people don't know exactly when a photo was captured, but they know that this is the important period of time that I really need to understand. And, and now you can actually select that and you can find all of the imagery that was captured within those ranges. Yeah, I think uh, the important thing that <laughs> the two of you kind of hit on here is that it did require a bit of a UI refresh. So like, even if you haven't seen any of this and you're hopping back in and you're, you know, using drone deploy, it's like, oh, things look different around here. And that's for good reason. Uh, anytime that you bring in a completely different set of data, uh, and bring in things that help provide context and date ranges and all those things, you have to really meticulously, uh, to your point, James, like ask how to go and navigate those things. And so uh, it's gr it, honestly, it's having been a long drone deploy user as a customer and now seeing some of these improvements with both of these tools combined, it's it's really encouraging because I think you hit the nail on the head, James, is that the whole goal here was discoverability. If we can't find it, it doesn't make sense to capture it and it doesn't make sense to share it. And I think that's really the key of, we feel like the discoverability uh, component of this has made a huge jump. Uh, we could just focus on this alone, but Jay, I want to get to the next part. Another great question that we had from uh, someone in the chat here. We do these live, by the way. So if we've had some people ask, are these just pre-recorded? No, uh, they are live. Um, there's a question here about, okay, what about 3D models? I mean, that's a whole nother level of uh, bringing into this idea of high accuracy uh, and survey uh, information. And, and that was another huge thing uh, that got announced and that we got worked through uh, last year. So Jay, uh, I want to share your screen again, kind of walk us through uh, what this can look like and bringing now 3D data into Tronopoi as well. Yeah, high accuracy has really been a core of everything we've done over the past few years. And um, I've honestly heard customers ask about bringing in um, other types of object data into drone deploy. Um, and there's really two pieces to it. You know, one aspect is you need to have really highly accurate data and you need to have the specific files that you can use to be able to align that data as accurately as possible. You know, when customers have tried to merge those two worlds before design and reality, uh, the, mo the most common challenge I've seen time and time again, multiple customers is, their data is in different coordinate systems or it doesn't line up because they didn't use control points on one of their data sets. Um, and if you can't align the data, uh, there's, there's really no reason in, in merging those two. And so uh, what we're excited about is really making high accuracy data extremely easy within drone deploy that then allows our customers to also bring in their design files and their drawings to easily compare that within drone deploy. So the first piece, for example, that we, uh, released uh, earlier last year, for those of you that weren't aware, is our um, RTK network where we connect with a variety of different third-party network providers to automatically give you entrip corrections if you're flying in a, currently a DJI Mavic 3 Enterprise. What that means for you is that you're going to get RTK corrected data simply by using the Drone Deploy flight app. This was something that I've personally even struggled with in the past when I was using the Phantom 4 RTK and had to subscribe to my own course network, put in my credentials, and then ensure that um, the tower that I'm connecting to is supported and something that I can capture data on. This is another way where we've simplified high accuracy data capture with Drone Deploy. In addition to, and James will talk about it um, even for this year, making PPK uh, corrections automatic and simple using Drone Deploy so that you don't even have to set up your own base station uh, you can leverage uh, third-party network as well to be able to get PPK automatically corrected on your data, as well as being able to simplify uh, GCP collection, tagging, and, and alignment within Drone Deploy. 
So for example, if you've got a handful of, of GCPs on your site, being able to even use a handful of those to calibrate your site. What that means is here's a, a specific project that uh, Bartlett Cock out in Texas as well had been using drone deploy on. Um, they used uh, the Mavic 3 Enterprise with drone deploy's RTK network um, and had used GCPs to calibrate the site. What that meant was that they were actually able to bring in a variety of DXFs uh, into their single project. So what you're actually looking at here is a series of nine different DXFs that they had brought into drone deploy to merge what they're seeing on that site as of this particular date according to their original designs. So you're seeing, for example, the roof membrane structure, the overall uh, site grading survey that was initially captured by a surveyor, um, some of the building structure um, and foundations, as well as the building peer foundations that are actually beneath the structure itself. So it gives you a really interactive way to see what those two look like. Um, and of course, you know, as you talk about some of the uh, tools we've uh, introduced as part of the stocking stuffers as part of our Christmas release, giving you a really powerful presentation tool that you can use to share with the project team, with the owner um, or your subcontractors to communicate on what is going on on this site and how does that compare against your existing design. So again, this is just a glimpse of what we've done in, in the past few months, but super excited to have a really effective and efficient way to finally merge your design files with reality in drone deploy. If there's anything I, you want to add to that. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot there too. I know we need to move fast because I I always take too long on these things, but I'm I'm super proud of this. You know, a year ago it really it, it was one of the things that frustrated me was um, it, it remained difficult to create high accuracy data, and this industry you know it has always been a, a thing that only certain expert pilots have been able to do. And our goal is that really you you should be able to get survey grade data by default. You should be able to, obviously you need a surveyor involved in that process, but to be able to actually able to capture the data should not be a special skill. Um, and so what, one of the things that we've been focusing on is every single step that people had to take to deliver that high accuracy data, we've examined it and we've tried to remove it. And so, yeah, you can either use drone deploys RTK network connects automatically. I hate that feature of, uh, <laughs> Uh, I like it. It looks good. Reminder to turn that off. Um, the ability to use uh, PPK as well. And again, that's just fully automated. We have this drag and drop, drop system now. You literally drag and drop the data in, and we will correct it in partnership with Aplanix, Trimble Aplanix, to be super high accuracy. And, and not only super high accuracy, but aligned with all the other maps in your, in your project as well. Yeah. Um, so really, there's tons of stuff in this one. This has been, for me, it's the... If you have high accuracy data, it's probably 10 times as valuable in terms of the actual insights you can glean. So anyone who's on the fence about whether they should be buying a new drone to you know, Mavic 3 Enterprise or something like that, please go ahead and do it and make sure you buy that RTK module because your whole, your whole mind is going to be blown about the things you can do with drone data that you couldn't do before. Yeah, well said. There's so much to unpack there. One, I think just... Like simplicity has always been at the core of drone deploy. Obviously, it's one of our core values, and you know, building trust is another one. And I think it's what I get excited about high accuracy is it's really simplicity that you can trust, uh, and that is a huge thing when you start to get more people involved, whether that's on your project or within your company and using this data. You got to trust it, and trust comes with accuracy. And th those are things that, uh, like you said, James, have just traditionally been very challenging to do. Whether you are a drone pilot or a surveyor or anyone, like it is hard. Th those are very challenging workflows. Just even to understand, let's just call the acronyms alone. <laughs> but not to say, I think that's what's really cool about this is we really are trying to simplify accuracy uh, in the RTK alone. I mean, we could spend in camp there uh, for a long time of just logins and credentials and networks and all that stuff. Guys, we got a lot of questions coming in. Uh, I don't know if my little triangle uh, question dinger is working or not, but we're going to get to those at the end here. We've had some really good ones that have come up. I just want to prep you guys. Uh, there's some good questions that are coming in. Please keep writing those in. We'll uh, get to those here in a second. Robotics and automation. So we hit on really the first one, Unified, right? Unified was bringing ground and air together, was bringing uh, high accuracy workflows in here. Jay, give us a little taste of what, hey, like how do we automate some of these captures and what does that look like uh, up until this point that folks can see? Yeah, um, and I'm sure some folks are asking, you know, what has drone deploy done differently in robotics automation in the past um, past year? You know, this is an area that we've been focused on um, really since about 2019, I believe, James, since the acquisition of uh, Rokos a few years ago. 
Um, and what's most exciting is that uh, you know my team and I specifically have been working with a lot of customers who have moved past POC of adoption of robotics and really started to deploy that on active projects. That's probably the biggest milestone that I've seen in the past year. Uh, this is actually uh, a, a specific uh, site, again, out in Houston. Um, we competed in a challenge called the Sprint Robotics Fitness Challenge um, that they host uh, annually to uh, test out a variety of different software and hardware platforms and see how it works together for a lot of customers, uh, predominantly within oil and gas, but also a variety of other industries. And what's particularly exciting is that um, we won two out of the three awards here for having the unified robotics system for automation, execution, teleoperations, scheduling, um, to be able to autonomously navigate um, a variety of different rovers and capture the data that you need. So what you're actually looking at here is one of the facilities um, that uh, we had competed in, the Sprint Robotics Challenge. Um, this walk path that you're looking at here was uh, autonomously captured um, with the Boston Dynamics Spot rover. Um, you can see the rover here. Uh, with a 360 camera to capture this 360 walk. We also have an OGI sensor and it's equipped with the uh, Boston Dynamics EAP solution that allows us to teleoperate it and be able to capture the data that we need. More importantly though, um, what's exciting is what you can start to do because you've started to automate and capture this data um, on a schedule. So for example, that means you can um, identify specific pieces of equipment or capture very specific sensor data from a variety of payloads that you might already have. For example, taking uh, photos of very specific pieces of equipment, or if you've got other types of sensors already available on your spot, being able to take those images and automatically have them uploaded and centralized in drone deploy. For example, with the OGI sensor as well, if you've got a thermal payload, you'd also be able to take those individual photos from that thermal payload and be able to have that uploaded and stored within drone deploy. So this is going beyond just capturing simple visual data, just as where DronePlay got started a few years ago, but starting to integrate a variety of different sensor data into drone deploy, whether it's multispectral, thermal, or really any other type of payloads you might be capturing um, with your robotics system. Yeah. Robotics are coming in hot. Uh, James, I don't want to make a bold statement here, but it's like, hey, this time next year, man, I, I don't want to say robotics are going to be as mainstream as like what AI was in 24, but boy, it sure feels like it. I mean, I think with some awesome hardware releases that are coming out, I think some mature software platforms that can, you know, operate some of those, like, give me some of your thoughts on this. I mean, this was a huge step that we made last year and I think makes 2040 more exciting this year. Yeah, mo most of our largest customers, and we have customers in every industry, every major industry, um, are looking at ways they can automate the reality capture. And... Um, we've seen a huge shift in mindset here. Uh, one very specific thing to call out is, you know, um, to use a dock drone historically it only made sense if you were doing it beyond visual line of sight, because the drones are so expensive, right? If you're going to spend a million dollars on a drone or a hundred thousand dollars on a drone, you need it to do something that is new and interesting. Um, we're going to see people buying DJI dock two even for their job site drone, right? It, it will be cheap enough and awesome enough in terms of the accuracy that you can get from that data that it's just easier to do that than walk outside, change the batteries, charge everything, fiddle with SD cards, forget all that. Just press one button, captures all the data you need, lands, charges, uploads it, everything is fully automated. And so even for someone who is just trying to make a decision about what to buy, you know, there will there will be opportunities within the year and there, there will be customers within the year who are choosing to buy a dock drone rather than a traditional you know manually operated drone but they'll fly it you know within visual line of sight yeah i think what's exciting about this and man you mentioned kudos to the dji team like they are uh, doc one was awesome right i, I think it really kind of uh, exposed a lot to a lot of different people of what was possible. Their doc drones have been around for a while, different prices, different capabilities, all that kind of stuff. But uh, doc two is going to be really exciting. Uh, if you haven't seen, go check out our YouTube channel, get some details of what they've announced or how they've announced it. And you can kind of see what's coming down the pipeline soon. But yeah, this year is 
man, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to coin years or phrase uh, title years, but man, automation is a, a huge, huge thing this year that I think just gets really exciting to uh, start to take advantage of. Fellas, I'm going to start to turn the corner. We're turning our way through here. Let's not just unify data. Let's not just automate collecting it. What do we do with all this data? I mean, holy cow, you're going to start to bring all these different pieces together. You're going to start to put it on a schedule and not have to go out and do it yourself. Jay, give me some, give me some love on the AI front. Cause this, this for sure was theme of 23 for a lot of folks. Uh, but tell me a little bit about what, uh, what we've done up to this point. And then obviously some exciting stuff we're going to talk about here today too. Yeah. Um, biggest piece is actually releasing a few, um, end to end reports for some of our customers. I mean, again, AI has been nothing new. We've had a few AI products as a company for a few years at this stage, like our stockpile AI product, um, which uh, has been relaunched and, and uh, accessible again for customers. Our uh, ML-based DTMs um, as part of our Christmas stocking stuffers as well was an area that we had updated. But probably the most exciting, um, and I'll talk about two, one in construction and one in energy, um, are two specific reports um, where customers have said, look, the maps are great but we're looking for hundreds or thousands of different elements. And we need you to quickly tell us um, whether they are within tolerance or out of tolerance. And we need to know that within a matter of hours, we can't wait days for that information. <laughs> <Challenge So accepted. laughs> um, and drone data makes that accessible. You know, if you're talking about doing laser scanning of any of this data, you could be talking about days, if not weeks of processing that data to get the, the insights that you need. So one example was being able to identify concrete sleeves, simply being able to know whether those sleeves have been installed in the correct location against design or if they're out of tolerance. And that then gives the product team information to say, should we remediate this issue or should we proceed with the port itself? So what you're actually looking at here is a full service report that's both an interactive project in drone deploy as well as a PDF report that shows you exactly that. So this quickly shows you, for example, all of the sleeves that we have identified as missing according to the design that's been uploaded. You can see those as these yellow issue markers that have been automatically annotated. And anything in green, this green count annotation, means we've verified about 145 sleeves across this particular site according to the design. And you can see the design in pink here um, and the, uh, the actual map um, on top of it. This gives you an example of the PDF report that we would give you directly um, after that is processed. And this is something that we can do within about two to four hours. That means you can make that decision extremely quickly. So that's just one report. Another report in the solar space, very similarly, is being able to identify solar construction progress. So there's actually two pieces of um, AI and reporting we've launched there. One, uh, you can use our AI annotation tools that are now in beta to be able to automatically identify those PV modules and run a quick count that will automatically identify them. So everything you see in purple here was something that Drone Employees AI was able to automatically identify and create an area annotation around those individual modules. But we can take it one step further and generate a report like this for you that automatically shows you all the different segments of panels that you've installed as of this date and the progress towards installation. So how many poles have you installed, racks have you installed, and modules you've installed. In this case, for all these blocks, since it's the end of construction, we're at 100% completion with blocks installed. So ultimately with AI, our, our goal here is how do we get you the um, insights much more quickly as opposed to users manually going in and trying to extract that data by manually counting or measuring or annotating object, objects within drone deploy. James, yeah. I know you're passionate about this one too. I mean- I, I am, I just wanted to call out a couple <laughs> of things here. So we, we did 120,000 of these reports in the last year. And I think all of all of those will have been delivered within four hours of, of the flight or the capture, um, but many of them within minutes. Um, and that's going to be the you know the power of AI is a, a lot of this stuff can be done almost instantly once the the uh, data is processed. We heard from Wilson uh, Howarth at uh, Juno Construction that the concrete pre-pour has saved just one project about $40,000 in terms of uh, cost remediation that, that was avoided. And that's how it should be. Um, every single flight, you should be saving dollars. You should be saving thousands of dollars and you should be increasing your efficiency. And how can, we're just trying to figure out, you know, what are the most valuable ways that we can add value um, in 
to to everyday workflows on every project and on, on every asset. Yeah, I, I mean, man, so much to talk about here. I I think what's just exciting about Jay, you kind of alluded to this. Like this is this wasn't new to us come pre 2023. Like this was something that really the foundation had been laid quite a bit. You know, we were cranking out reports and doing various different things. But what's exciting is that it be, did become more mainstream, and then we were getting more questions asked of like, hey, what what are you guys doing? Or hey, these are problems that I'm trying to solve. Hey like these are the time frames that I'm trying to solve them in. And I think that's, what's really cool about this is there's a lot of Lego pieces here that I think really build off of, again, unifying data, automating the capture of it. And then like, Hey, let's actually get some insights from this. Let's not just get data uh, for data's sake. And so uh, awesome stuff, Jay, really appreciate you even just uh, opening that up, going through a lot of those things that uh, lots to cover. Uh, one, if, if any of this is new to you guys, uh, let us know. We have obviously some questions in the chat here, some of which uh, you were doing well in prepping some of the things we were going to ask. Someone asked about how do we do those fly throughs? Uh, I'm, I'm scrolling in through here. Uh, a few other things. How do we get the models in? A lot of good things that uh, we did uh, announce and can dive into a little bit more. But uh, let's let's get into it here, guys. Like 2024, it's here. We're already 20 plus days in. Uh, some really exciting things to uh, note here. I'm actually going to do this a little bit live here. Uh, let's see if I can pop this out. Uh, if you haven't seen our blog post uh, that we put out, we do this once a quarter. Uh, it's really intention is to really bring awareness to you guys uh, of all the things that are getting announced. Uh, we try to do these videos on the back end of those just so that you can uh, kind of be familiar with what it is that's coming out and kind of get some commentary to it too. But Jay, kind of walk us through a little bit of these. Obviously, you talked about the uh, concrete report here and and really just kind of, I'm going to scroll down through here to kind of highlight some of these things as well. Can you yeah. zoom in a little bit there, Grant, yeah. as well? Just Guys, I'm doing this live here. Don't uh, don't ask too much of me here. There we go. Okay, cool. There we go. <laughs> so, uh, we obviously talked a lot about concrete sleeve reports. So, uh, I mean, I don't think we need to spend more time on that. If you're interested, reach out to your drone play representative. We'd be happy to chat to you more about it. That's now uh, live and available. So that's really what we're announcing as part of this release. Uh, DJI Doc support is something we're we're really excited for this uh, this quarter in particular. Uh, for those of you that attended drone play conference, we announced it last October. Um, what's particularly exciting is uh, my team alone has probably about five different uh, doc implementations that we've already been asked to do this month, 20 days into 2024. Uh, yeah. What that really means is that um, we're, we're seeing interest for doc. It's beyond the early exploratory stage, um, but it means our, our customers are uh, looking at doc, and in this case, even the DJI doc, the current one that's currently accessible, um, and are eager to get started with drone deploy. And quickly on this, it's just like using the Mavic 3 Enterprise, right? You, you just plan the flight. In fact, if you've already planned the flights, you can just switch it, switch it out and start running them from your office on the dock. Yeah, I, I think what, and I might add a little two cents in here too. I think the fact that we are already integrated on dock one, like guys, just wait. Uh, I shouldn't say just wait. If, if dock one is your dock, go for it. It's amazing. Dock two is going to be incredible. There's some awesome stuff out there. Anyway, I'm going to, blaze through this to uh, not say anything I can't. So magic annotations, James, do you want to kind of touch on this one? Yeah. Um, you know, there's a whole new raft of generative AI that came out in the last year. Um, we've been building machine learning models in-house based on some of that new technology. And one of the cool things that we're, we're releasing is, is this magic annotations feature. It effectively understands objects in in the environment and it allows you to select an object so you want to select a car you click on a car and it'll find the whole car you want to select a stockpile you click on the stockpile it'll find the toe of the stockpile and uh, and then generate annotations based on this what we're what we want to do next and and that we're looking at doing this quarter is you find one stockpile well why can't it offer to find all of them for you um how, how can we you know we're always looking at ways how can we make you 10 times faster or 100 times faster in doing that thing that you do every day. Um, so there's much more to come here, but um, some really, you know, really cool stuff. <laughs> I love the quotes here. I, 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 one, obviously we have a lot of happy people, but yeah, it's just kind of funny here too. All right, Jay, finish this out here with uh, some other an AI annotation stuff. Yeah, and I think this kind of layers into what James had shared. You know, we've had AI as a product at Drone Deploy for a few years now, um, but this is really about being able to uh, add on to what we've already launched a few years ago and make it much more accessible for our customers. So for example, that means being able to automatically identify, like I showed earlier, 
um, solar PV modules, but being able to automatically identify a uh, number of orchard trees in your nursery and be able to get a count of that. Being able to automatically identify um, stockpiles um, or other types of, of models. What's really exciting here though, um, and for everyone else listening in on this call is if there's something in particular that you're interested in, in training or building your model up, um, of, what this really allows us to do is say, uh, let us know and we may be able to build a custom model for you um, in order to be able to identify whatever it is that you are looking to identify. Um, we've got the structure and the architecture in order to be able to execute it. And we've already launched a few models that are publicly available as part of our open beta um, for you to identify things today, such as orchard trees, uh, palm trees, uh, solar panels, uh, solar PV modules specifically in stockpiles. I remember one of the first things that I flew a drone mapping mission for was to count cars because it truly was going to be faster than me walking a parking lot to try to count them. Uh, it's crazy. If you guys haven't uh, played around with this tool or if you don't think that there are uses for it, uh, watch out. There's some really great stuff. So uh, I'll, I'll tell you a quick anecdote. As a, there's a customer that I was working with that based out on the East Coast here. I think they're out in the Boston area where uh, they were hired by um, a customer to uh, identify how busy a shopping mall was on any given day of the week. And so they would go out and uh, actually not even any given day of the week, but by morning, afternoon and evening, what does that change look like? So they had about three maps per day over the course of a month that they were going out and capturing. And they had started off by individually counting cars on each map, three maps per day. Um, and as soon as we launched uh, Car Count AI, they were able to quickly get the counts that they needed and generate that report for the customer. It's yeah. so like that type of insights are now incredibly easy to do with these annotation tools. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, it's really, really cool to see how far it's come. Last thing here on the locations front, uh, we talked a little bit about discoverability in kind of that grounded air uh, unification stuff. Some uh, really, I, I hate to even call these subtle uh, <laughs> improvements, but really when we think about uh, just how do we find this data? We're always trying to think about what are easy ways to do that. Uh, construction, that's traditionally been done in locations, which is another really exciting thing. Go read about it in the blog post. I'm not going to read through uh, a lot of the stuff on here too. But this is the live stream that you guys are tuning into. A couple questions because I want to get to this. This is really important. Guys, we have had a lot of questions in here. I know you're not tuning in on the live like I am here on my phone down here. But uh, how, how did you do the fly through? Where are these models coming from? Where is that 3D cube that, Jay, you were showing? By the way, if you are a uh, if you fell asleep on Christmas, uh, which many of us did, or probably uh, snoozed out over some football or some uh, different sports that were going on, we dropped a ton of just customer appreciation week uh, improvements. This is something that uh, James, I'm just going to let you talk over because if I were to spend time on here, I'm going to probably <laughs> get us way too long into here. But just some amazing things again on the blog. Go check it out. Uh, there's some nice uh, kind of snowflakes at the top. But James, what what stood out on here for you? Because I mean, tons of well, stuff. I mean, there. The whole concept here was what are the, you know, we, we get so many smaller requests that maybe they don't fit into the big theme of, of work that we happen to be working on. And we really wanted to set aside some time for the team just to go wild and and solve as many of those as they can. And they, they ended up shipping like, 40 separate things but here are, we, we we picked out some of the coolest ones you saw um you saw from jay very cool demo just now you can actually create um keyframe animations for your for your project and save them and then reuse that in the future so for example if you yeah and, and you can turn everything on so you can turn on contours you can turn on your 3d dxfs your ifc models you can um, and then you can have that same video recorded because it's all high accuracy and you can have that same video recorded time after time. So very, very cool. We um, also added that view cube that you, you mentioned, something that'll be familiar to people who use 3D software and makes it easier to get to that the right perspective. It also makes it a bit easier for folks who are much more of the sort of point and click orientation versus Maybe some of us are more familiar with, you know, holding down control and right clicking and, and dragging around in 3D tools. Um, we've been rolling out machine learning everywhere, every single place that we can think of. Uh, one of the really awesome things that we can do now is because these machine learning models are so great at removing, you know, understanding the scene, you can remove trees, you can remove cars, you can remove structures, 
and people much much more easily because we actually understand the phys you know the physical objects that that make up you know the, those things that I just said and so it's much much not simpler but much simpler to build robust tools than it has ever been in the past. I, I love the workshop has been busy. We're my keyboard shortcut folks, you know, I mean, even just stuff like that. It's like, come on, can we get some, uh, let's see if I can see him here. It's like duplicate annotation. Come on, man. Like, and that's great. I think you said it well, James is like these sometimes get kind of lost in the cracks and may not get, uh, kind of the stage time that some of these other big announcements do, but, uh, yeah, really exciting stuff. All right. I'm going to bring us back here. One more yeah. slide. We had, we had 3 million annotations added in the last month. Uh, so I'm sure duplicate annotation is going to be popular with a lot of people who are, who are having to create them individually. All right, James, bring us home, my friend, what do we got first releases of 24? I mean, this is, this is awesome. I mean, this is what we're kind of kickstarting the year with and yeah, walk us through a little bit about what we're sneak peeking here for, uh, this yeah. year. So I, I mentioned it before, we're not done unifying right there, there is there is so much data that's being captured in different systems on projects on in assets in fields across the us and the world and yes we brought together aerial and ground and i really hope that uh, people will be moving you know their next projects to that system because it's so much easier to use than you know having separate point solutions but there's more to do. Fixed cameras there. Folks have fixed cameras for security, for uh, time lapse all over their systems. And we'll be bringing, we'll be integrating actually with seven or eight uh, fixed camera providers uh, in, in the coming months to bring fixed cameras into the drone deploy interface. Um, millions, I think maybe a hundred million people on earth have a phone like this, which has a LIDAR scanner in the back, and that actually allows you to capture the world in 3D very, very quickly and to a surprisingly high degree of accuracy. There, there are a lot of side-by-side -side tests on this, and it is, it is very, very impressive. And so we will be enabling you to capture the world in 3D from your iPhone this year. And uh, we're, we're, uh, even just early this year, we're working with some of our largest customers on, on that problem. Uh, we know there are lots of folks who are now looking at how can they move their uh, historical and current structure site projects across into drone deploy ground so they can have it all in one place. Um, and we are looking for volunteers there for, you know, who, who want to do that sooner rather than later. So please contact the team and, and we're, we'll, our goal is to make that as seamless as possible for the folks on site. Obviously, the minimum disruption possible for the maximum value. Let's not forget about uh, that little guy in the middle there. I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, doc two. Um, so that's DJI doc two. And um, we have been, we're actually already rolling that out on customer sites. We are excited to support DJI doc two. There's uh, some good, hilarious video of, of the unboxing of, of <laughs> our doc two in, in our New Zealand office just um, a few weeks ago as we uh, as we started to set that up for ourselves. But yeah, customers are already excited about this and, and I am too. And then on the right hand side, um, we have this whole theme of AI coming this year, which is around construction intelligence. How, how can you understand what's happening on your site? more deeply from the reality capture that you're already doing. And uh, like I said, that's about delivering you insights very rapidly after you capture. And um, our real focus there is how can we build insights that field teams are going to want to use. And so that we're, we're going really deep with field teams and talking to them about, you know, how can we add value on the day to day? Uh, and then the final thing at the bottom there is, you know, ultimately, we want customers to be able to ask the drone deploy AI uh, really complicated contextual questions about what's happening on their job site. And we want to be able to answer those questions directly. Right? You, you can ask ChatGPT about Paris, France. You should be able to ask drone deploy about your job site. And it should be able to answer not just accurately, but give you evidence 
you know, point to the measurement, point to the photo in which, or the set of photos that prove that point. Are we OSHA compliant on level one? Um, well, we, <laughs> we've walked through level one a week ago. We should be able to answer that question, at least for that, uh, that specific uh, time in, in, you know, ultimately. And we're not gonna be able to do that this year. I highly doubt we'll be able to do that this year, but ultimately, you know, we should be able to answer those types of questions and we'll be bringing tools out this year for folks to try and, and work with us to improve over time, which, which are along those lines. Yeah. I, there's so much stuff in 24, I, maybe because we're only like 20 some odd days in to be excited about. But, uh, I think the foundation for this year was really set kind of towards the end of last year. You know, we, we announced some stuff, uh, that we were working on at our user conference and really some of those things that James, you're kind of alluding to as well. And so, uh, but just even before we kind of sign off here, like these are all user based feedback. Like this is things that you guys have told us that you want. Like, uh, of course, we're exploring and understanding what's possible and where, you know, things uh, can really be added to this. But your yeah. feedback in this is incredibly helpful. You know, James, you talked about, you know, uh, who are the fixed cam uh, companies that you guys use? Like, what are the uh, types of applications you would use your phone in uh, to want to scan a room or do something like that? So please do continue. I mean, you guys are already incredible at giving us feedback and helping direct uh, some of these pieces of information. But uh, yeah, awesome sneak peek, James. Uh, anything yeah. else you want to add? One more thing. Uh, if you just uh, yeah, click through to the final slide there as, as a video, you know, one of the other big asks for customers is, can you reconstruct walks in the same way that you do for flights, right? How can you make 3D models that are measurable that we can you know, and build point clouds, build um, exports that we can, you know, take to the bank in terms of the size and shape and, and scale of them? And the answer is yes. Um, and so one of the big projects that we've been working on in the background for a, a couple of quarters and, and that we'll be delivering on over these next six months is actually allowing you to create 3D models and also to create um, floors uh, and floor those, I, I guess you can call them, um, which show you what is happening on the ground um, on, on your projects on every single level. So um, that that's a huge ask. I know people really want to be able to measure their, their walks and their walkthroughs. And um, uh, you're going to see a lot more from us in that space this year. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, lots of fun stuff. Uh, I, I do want to be cognizant of time because man, we can go so long on these, uh, really. Cause there's so much exciting stuff to uh, talk about. Jay, anything else as I kind of tee uh, some stuff up here for next steps that you want to hit on? No, I'm, I'm particularly excited about everything we're doing in terms of automation this year. I see that as being a big accelerator for the reality capture industry as a whole and excited to see the hardware landscape grow with us. Um, and of course, AI will be a, a big pillar that our customers are going to be asking as well. Um, so two key areas I'm, I'm particularly excited for in, in 2024, along with a lot of the the hot keys in particular. I'm a power user. Employee. Yeah. Jay's, Jay's a hot key that. guy. Uh, not going to lie. That's awesome. I, Grant, are there any of those questions? I know, you know, the point of doing this live is so we can answer yeah, questions. Yeah, for sure. I, quick fire you want to throw at us, and maybe we can't answer them now, but we no, can No, they're great. Uh, one, this is probably one of, uh, been one of the most questions uh, sessions that we've had, so kudos to the folks that have been uh, asking these too, uh, some of which, and I'll tee this up here uh, kind of on the next slide. Anthony, I'm going to call you out, man, because you've been uh, asking a ton of questions on here. Uh, I, I know that we have an answer to this one, so uh, Jay and James, I'll kind of let you, either of you guys take this. I think, Anthony, you were asking this around kind of the doc solutions and uh, how do you use like an automated doc on an NDA project that's concerned about data? Obviously, uh, that's something that we have a lot of resources that we can point you to as well. But let's just talk about doc solutions and security. Uh, that That's something that we can easy camp out on and, and give some context to. Yeah, I mean, folks, folks who are installing docs, they're going to have much higher security requirements and drone deploy is the most secure way to deploy a DJI dog. Now, um, NDAA is, is very specific. And so we also partner with two different um, doc providers. Uh, in addition, we partner with Skydio and, and you know, they, um, they, they've been developing an awesome doc solution as well. And uh, with Flightbase, uh, who have a number of different doc types that um, that can send data directly to drone deploy after after the flight. So there's a lot 
lot to do there. From our perspective, we actually effectively create a, a secure area on the internet for, or actually off the internet for the doc to exist in um, so that we can control everything that's going in and out. Um, and we're going to do much more on that front as we go through this year. Yeah, great question. Security is not new to Drone Deploy. <laughs> We've been uh, really trying to stay ahead as much uh, on that front too. So uh, yeah, appreciate clarifying that. And a lot of happy birthdays, Jay, for you. So I'm just going through here too. Anthony made another comment about uh, Sin2, another great product uh, in the reality capture space. Uh, talking about point clouds. Uh, Jay, I, you hear that a lot. Talk, talk a little bit about just other tools that you hear uh, that uh, other users are using to also either export their drone data out of uh, or bring other model data into drone deploy. Yeah, I, I think ultimately, uh, you know, especially as we've expanded internationally, I've heard of a lot of different tools that our customers are using either in conjunction with drone deploy instead of drone deploy or using it for slightly different workflows. Um, and it varies quite a bit from country to country. Sintu is a great product that I've heard of a few of our customers use as well. Um, and really, it, it comes down to, you know, how is it going to be most impactful for your teams? You know, does that mean living and breathing within um, Procore or Autodesk? Because that's where your teams spend a lot of their time. Does that mean um, uh, having that data centralized within Esri? Because you guys are already an Esri shop and want to make sure that that data is consolidated in Esri. Or bring that data into... Uh, Sintu or another tool entirely. And I think our, our answer as an SE team is always the same. It, it One, whatever is going to be most impactful for your project team is what we want to enable. And we either have out-of-the-box integrations that are available for um, many of those solutions, or we've got APIs accessible that our team is more than happy to have a conversation with you on to say, how do we get either drone deploy data into your tool or data from your tool into drone deploy so that we can enable your team at the end of the day. Yeah, the migration tools I, I've been really encouraged by too. I mean, uh, you can't just talk about Unify. You have to also do it. <laughs> you have to create tools that bring, um, you know, data over from other platforms. And that's not easy. Like that's kind of the unsexy stuff that uh, does need to happen, but uh, can oftentimes just get too too challenging and laborious. So good good point on that. And we had a question about how did you do the fly through? We got to that one eventually. Um, uh, some shout outs for simplicity. Thanks for uh, for that here too. Uh, this is a great question. Uh, Jack asked, uh, in the future, do y'all see uh, new technologies? Uh, Jay, this is uh, up in your wheelhouse from a Reality Capture Live that we did uh, last year about, uh, I, I mispronounce this every time, uh, the Gaussian splat. Did I even say that right? Did I say it right? Yeah, I've heard both. You know, okay, you're cool. going to polarize the internet just like with gifts. <laughs> get into that please space. don't please don't make memes of me, <laughs> I, I beg you. But the question was, is uh, do, do you see stuff like that coming into Drone Deploy? Uh, specifically, Jack was asking about mission planning uh, in kind of that realm. So, yeah, any any thoughts to that? Yeah, I mean, I, I could talk a little bit about how customers have been using it, and maybe James can talk about what that's looking like within the product. Um, you know, I'd say uh, if you haven't joined that LinkedIn Live session, by the way, um, we did that uh, a reality capture live session, um, I think a couple of months ago, is that grant um, mm -hmm. with Ben Stoker from uh, Skender. Uh, him alongside a couple of our customers are technology evangelists and are constantly exploring new kinds of technologies. And so um, Gaussian splats or Gaussian splats, however you want to call it, are uh, one technology that um, some of our customers are exploring in conjunction with drone deploy. For example, one of the benefits of using a technology like that means you can have a, um, a marketing deliverable that you can use that shows what your site looks like um, that bypasses some of the limitations of photogrammetry around things like buildings or water or other types of um, those types of uh, homogenous objects. Um, so I think one, uh, it's something we're already seeing customers use today. We're learning from them on how they're using a lot of these technologies and either complementing what they're already doing with these, some of these technologies or looking to bring it in. But I'll defer to you, James, on how we're thinking about it within our product. Yeah, every single part of our photogrammetry pipeline or all the processing that we do, we have a fully machine learning version of it. And so we we don't run the fully fully machine version learning version on every single map because it it's not actually better on every single map there are certain you know parts that that are and aren't and um you know since we we saw amazing and we continue to see amazing developments with nerfs as well in the same um in the same vein which is basically how do you make a 3d scene that looks like the world like how do you make it look exactly like if you were standing there and i think that's 
you know, we have these great 3D models, they look fantastic, um, they're measurable, but then they have an edge. <laughs> uh, or that, you know, you look at it from a certain direction, or there are very thin structures that are not reconstructed. And I think there's a huge opportunity for us to even just toggle between a Gaussian splat view and a, and a 3D view in our platform, and then that allow people to run those 3D fly throughs through a Gaussian splat um, version of the model. And, and we, we've already produced a, a number of those from uh, from the existing data we have in Drone the Plane. Yeah. Uh, Jay, that was the uh, Reality Capture Live that you stepped in for me. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that was awesome. Great conversation. Uh, we encourage you guys to go check out our YouTube channel. Uh, that I think recording was posted there to go uh, check out. Three more questions, and then we're going to tie this thing up. Uh, Mavic, or sorry, Matrice 350, Drone Deploy. What, yeah. uh, what's, what's the thoughts on that? Um, at the moment, we recommend people fly it with the built-in app, with the pilot app. Um, we, I would like to bring all of the capabilities that we've released for the Mavic 3 Enterprise to it. It's not a massive piece of work for us to do, and it's something that we've tested in house, and we have, you know, all of the all the happy path stuff works. Reality is, we have a very very high bar to say that we will support a drone, and the reason for that is people need to, you know, trust that that is going to work every single time they they go and fly, um, and so just saying, you know. We could we could probably say tomorrow that we supported it, but the reality is that means there's a ton of testing that we need to we need to do. And, you know, we need to look at every edge case, look for all the bugs, and so it's something that we're looking at this year, um, and we'll do it based on customer demand. So if yeah. you know if folks uh, bring this up in the quarterly business reviews uh, with the the CSMs, if we see a, a lot of these drones in use on projects, we will obviously respond to that and support often gets confused jay i, I could see you uh, over there to support we ingest any kind of media and documentation from an 350 yeah. just to be clear uh is, that, i think the question was more around hey flight controller for that drone specifically so oftentimes confused uh two different parts there two more questions uh i'd, I'd also oh, go like if you're interested in using and you've got questions about it feel free to reach out to us either through support or someone on the sc and we'd be happy to chat to you about it. I mean, one of our most successful customers out in the UK has been using um, an M300 and, or M350 with the P1, and they're capturing really high quality, high accuracy data um, and bring that into drone deploy. So it's certainly possible. Um, does require a steeper learning curve today than using the drone deploy flight app. So to James' point, we'll, we'll try and make that easier. But it's not impossible to bring that data into drone deploy today. All right, we got Michael, who uh, oil and gas uh, side of life, surveyor, uh, getting into LIDAR. Uh, talk about LIDAR ingestion. We talked about model ingestion into drone deploy, yeah. but what about other uh, other LIDAR formats, whether that's uh, XYZ, LAS, RCP, all those kind of uh, uh, point cloud yeah. type uh, data? I'll do a very quick one on that. We, we have a private beta um, of uh, LAS ingestion, and... I, I can see us expanding that this year. Um, ultimately, this is, a, this is a, again, this is a demand piece. We know that we can produce very high quality, measurable 3D data from photogrammetry. We know that that is generally 10 times cheaper than doing it with LiDAR. I am very excited to bring LiDAR into the application, especially from a unified perspective. And I'm excited to deliver very similar outputs that we can currently deliver with through photogrammetry, so all the measurements, everything, and, and our, our system is set up to do that. But um, yeah, that's that would be later on this year. If um, it, yeah, if we're going to announce it, it, it would be later on this year. And uh, I, I want to add maybe one before I go to this last question: Is there an intent uh, to merge that data with some of the ground data that's already being captured? You showed some of those uh, videos and kind of reconstruction. Is the idea to combine some of those i'm assuming brian who asked that question that that's kind of the the yeah i mean so the general point is any any data that is 3d is um geospatial can be linked together um we are looking at doing that for aerial and ground capture from mobile phones and, and drones and um i expect we'll do more and more with lidar as well cool Last question, and then uh, we are going to wrap up. We are at the bottom of the hour. Uh, Adam was asking, because you, you kind of teased this, James, but I'm not going to let you off the hook that easily. 
what what are those fixed camera companies like? What are what are some of the ones that uh, you feel comfortable uh, maybe hinting to? We had one uh, come to our uh, user conference last year that I, I'm sure we'll make that list. But uh, yeah, just the fixed camera stuff, super exciting. There's a lot of vendors in that space. I think there's a lot of uh, just makes sense uh, kind of thoughts to that. But and anyone you can share, uh, I'm, I'm I, trying to help I'm you, not, Adam, who's on the chat. I'm not going to get sucked into that because we, we are signing a bunch of contracts and those contracts have specific terms in. So I'm not going to say all the names, but the yeah. If, um, and if you're listening to this and you're a fixed camera provider and we haven't been speaking, then please reach out to us. But we, we basically work down the list of the most popular ones amongst our customers. So likelihood is if you're using a generally understood brand name of, of camera provider, we've probably already spoken to and they're probably working with us. On, yeah, on there's this. a ton of mutual excitement there too. I mean, fixed cameras aren't going anywhere. They're incredibly helpful uh, for all different industries too, which is super exciting. And to be able to just geospatially see that on a map, click on it, go to that feed. I mean, there's, there's a lot of that just makes sense uh, baked in there too. So Fellas, thank you all again. Uh, before uh, we let our guests go, I'm going to flip over to one more thing here, which is really just your next step. Uh, I, I, this title uh, it took me off guard. How to actually supercharge your teams. I don't know. Uh, today, we were just talking about all the amazing and fun stuff. But hopefully, there's some supercharging in what we talked about today. But uh, a part two to this uh, will be next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, the 31st, before January wraps up. Uh, there is an awesome uh, conversation that's going to be had here. Wilson, who we talked a little bit about uh, in this conversation, will be there. Allie, Philip, Hunter, Adam, amazing folks uh, across the board that are really going to dive into a lot of specifics about this uh, and really some of the examples and use cases. Jay hinted at a couple of that. Allie uh, works for Bart Lukaku, one of those examples that we showed here today. And so to register for that, uh, scan that below, uh, put your phones up to the screen, uh, make sure that you get uh, that link as well. We'll be able to share that here in the chat. Uh, if you might have missed it or not tuning in live. But uh, without further ado, uh, James, Jay, thank you guys again. This, these are always just really fun. I love uh, kicking off the quarters and really talking through some of these things. Uh, I hope you guys had as much fun as I did. Jay, I know a big birthday presents all around, and not just for me, but a lot of people uh, in here as well. So happy birthday, friend. And James, thanks for uh, tuning in with us here too. Thanks to everyone who joined in. Yeah, thank you, Grant. Awesome. We will see you guys next time. Take care, and we will see you next week. Thanks.